I mean, I can't think of his name, but uh, we'll find that out later. It's not really that important. You go on uh, uh, Wikipedia, and it's right there for you. But uh, his strategy was to look at stocks when they're down and look at the money that they're bringing in, their assets, deaths, the ratio, ratio to the bills, and it would be undervalued. The stock could be selling for a certain amount of money, and it's really worth quite a bit more. And they could wait, and they'd put their money into it. But this, um, uh, I think the gentleman's name was Graham. Uh, but he became famous for his analyzation of the stock market, the crash. He identified about four problems. One, uh, too much leverage. Leverage. See, in those days, uh, you could say you could put $1,000 out of your bank account, put it in a stock account, and you could borrow, uh, buy $10,000 worth of stock, 10 to 1 ratio. You, boy, you think you, okay, you got $10,000, if the stock happened to go up to 20000 you could take your uh, $10,000 profit, and now you could buy 100000 and so on and so on. Some people got quite rich, and um, uh, Joseph Kennedy, uh, President Kennedy's father, uh, made an awful lot of money with that, and on top of uh, uh, running a, 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 whis a whiskey or a rum or something. And he was in a barber shop, and he was talking to Schumann. Now, even though he listened to uh, the, sh the guy's shoe sh shine shoes. And what the man said was that what goes up comes down. And Joseph Kennedy listened to him, took his money out just in the nick of time. Now, what Graham also said, the reason for the crash, well, we had too much inventory. Inventory standing around. And there was too much leveraging, too much uh, exuberance in stocks. Uh, when you're just too excited, you're going to get rich overnight. Who, who wouldn't get excited if you subscribe to that? And also, there was too much dishonesty. And the government, after the crash, they changed some of those. Uh, dishonesty is awful hard to get rid of. But they uh, assigned, they, you can no longer borrow $10 to 1 in stocks. You can still leverage a little bit. So um, that's what happened. Get a phone call here. Let me put it on in order. So again, going back to Chris Crisco, Crisco. I'm not saying it correctly. Uh, you, you, if you put a lot of money in there, you don't have much money. You're gonna need some help, and you don't want to go to another thief. So I would, if you don't know a good financial person or a good attorney, a um, great place to start with is with the bishop or the priest of church or somebody in church. And they might be able to get you started. <clears throat> Sometimes if the money is evaporated, there's just no reach getting it back, no matter how deserving you are. But I hope that won't be the case this time. I hope that so many of our wonderful people out there that worked hard for that money will get it back. I'm going to close off now. I'm going to leave you with one of Cowboy Ron's quotes. Oh, yeah, a little announcement here. I'm going to be coming, start to broadcast on a regular basis, three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, from a rodeo um, station, uh, let me get it right, rodeo country, a little more important, 90.1, I'll wait a second so you can write this down, Snowflake Taylor, Arizona, and these will be 15, 20 minute segments, my first one will be on Roy Rogers, the next one I'm working on right now when I finish a visit with you folks, is going to be Rex Allen, a, a real Arizonian, a great musician, great entertainer. And I'll finish you with a Cowboy Ron quote. This is for younger people, too, especially. If you don't know where you're going, you ain't going to get there. Good night. God bless. Cowboy Ron signing off.